The most important thing we can do as people who are trying to make creative work is to be yourself and uh, embrace what is uniquely you and your own voice. People who want to hire you are looking for something new. I know that there is this idea that like studios want the same, yes and no. It's like comfortable enough, but also we've never seen it before. What's very important to me when I begin writing a piece is to not have a, a, a message, uh, to not have um, any intention beyond staying true to the world in which I'm trying uh, to, to write in. What is story? Uh, Balanchine once said when he was being criticized for doing choreographic pieces that were abstract, you know, of a man takes a woman's hand, what more story do you need? My brothers, when they read the script for the first time said, well, you know, I know that they're speaking uh, early modern English, but it sounds like our family art. You know, you can't be judgmental of the characters and the time period. You can't uh, rewrite history to, to conform to the zeitgeist, but you do have a responsibility to understand what's going on today and not be foolhardy. My inspiration uh, often comes from research. I'm researching and writing in tandem. So I'm, uh, you know, I research enough to write some more and then I research enough to write some more. If you think about writing it in an achievable way, you're not gonna write it. So just write it and you'll figure it out. Uh, and you have to be blind to the realities of, of shooting to, to tell the best story. Uh, the most important thing we can do as people who are trying to make creative work is to be yourself and uh, embrace what is uniquely you and your own voice. So obviously, I'm just talking about uh, my approach, and uh, and I and it's and it's unique t to the kind of strange interests uh, that I have. And I, I just hope that there's some tools that you can put in your toolbox uh, that can work with how you are you. You have to like find your own voice. It's okay to start out being derivative uh, it, because that's how we become ourselves. Um, but, but what you know, people who want to hire you are looking for something new. I know that there is this idea that like people want like like studios want the same and there's and it's like yes and no you, you, you know that it's like it's like comfortable enough but also we've never seen it before a few things that I think about and struggle with uh, is trying to find a harmonious balance of certain opposites in in my writing uh, the 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 over, the largest things would be like I, I you know Dionysian versus Apollonian the sort of, um, or, or I'll start with Apollonian, which is, you know, the, 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 the structure, the, uh, what, what patriarchal, patriarchal Western culture would call like male ideals, and then the, Di the Dionysian uh, female m mysterious the, uh, stuff. Like how do you create a balance of something that is like rigorous and, and structured and, and, and clear, but also has enigma and, and mystery and atmosphere? I'm sorry to admit, but I don't tend to get writer's block. And that's because uh, I, I'm so research focused. So if I'm feeling stuck, I can just pick up a book and read a sentence that's inspiring or even sometimes misread a sentence that's inspiring and can get me uh, going. I'm researching and writing in tandem. So I'm, uh, you know, I research enough to write some more and then I research enough to write some more. My inspiration uh, often comes from research. Uh, I think, you know, different stories come about in different ways. Um, very often I start with uh, an, an atmosphere uh, that is uh, uh, an imagined tactile atmosphere, but also a, a visual atmosphere of, of, of a world uh, that I want to explore. And then I try to find a story that can accompany that. So um, uh, with The Witch, for example, I remembered the, my, as a kid, like really thinking about the idea weird kid, 
maybe, that people who grew up in the reign of Queen Elizabeth were like walking around in the woods behind where I grew up. And that atmosphere and the sense of dread and, 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 a, and, a, and a real witch, uh, y- you know, that was exciting to me. So then research, research, research to then find a story that can accompany that atmosphere. And what's very important to me when I begin writing a piece is to not have uh, a, a message, uh, to not have um, any intention beyond staying true to the world in which I'm trying uh, to to write in. Um, so, but 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 thank heavens, like as much as I try to seal myself up like an anchorite uh, or and lock myself in my alchemical cell, uh, you know. It, the world is not, my world is not vacuum sealed. So I am affected by the zeitgeist, whether I want to be or, or not. And if, and, and that's important because otherwise, you know, the witch can't just appeal to people uh, who are, are alive in the 1630s and the lighthouse can't just appeal to people who are alive in the 1890s because there's not enough graveyard screenings uh, for that to be profitable. Um, uh, so, you know, with the witch, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that, that, that most people, though not everyone for sure, uh, sees the film as a feminist film. If I were to be objective and stand back, I, I think I would agree with that stance. Uh, but that was not my intention. I just wanted to make a witch movie, as I kind of said. And, 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 but, 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 but that's what happened. With, with The Lighthouse, which I don't know if people have seen, um, I, you know, I was just trying to make a ghost story in a lighthouse, uh, which it's finally not. But it became, you know, when I was writing this story, this hyper-masculine story about two men I, with my brother, I was thinking, this is, why are we writing this right now? This is the worst time to be writing this story. And then once we had the first draft, we realized, like, oh, I guess we're talking about toxic mas- masculinity and, like, everything that's, like, uh, messed up about it. So, uh, so that's, that's cool. Um, and uh, you know, but 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 even still, when you're getting into this this uh, other world, you know, you can't be judgmental of the characters and the time period. You can't uh, rewrite history um, to to uh, to to conform to the zeitgeist. But you do have a responsibility to understand what's going on today and not be foolhardy. Uh, the the thing that I'm working on currently has slavery and violence against women, and, uh, and it takes place in, in the Viking Age. So that's gonna happen. But how do I tell those stories without rewriting hi- history responsibly? I don't, you know, those are the questions I have to ask myself and I can't provide easy answers. What is story? Uh, Balanchine once said when he was being criticized for doing chore- like uh, choreographic pieces that were abstract, you know, of a man takes a woman's hand, what more story do you need? Uh, you know, I think um, in America, e- e- even more than Britain, but also in Britain more than con- continental Europe, there is this kind of like traditional narrative dramaturgy that is held by many film students and, and critics to be uh, what what is good, you know, and, and having these kinds of turning points and three act structure or five act structure, whatever it is, uh, and and your and how you play by those rules and tell the story is um, what makes you a good storyteller. But of course, that's absurd. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, from you know Shakespeare's Coriolanus is not the best way to tell that story, like the way the scenes come together, but it's so well written that it's incredibly moving. And that's like the form. Um, in, in, in doing this kind of archetypal storytelling, even if it's based on a fairy tale or a myth, I still try to bring in you know, my, my personal experiences, the things that, that, that are me. When my brothers first read uh, the witch screenplay, they said, you know, even though this is the 17th century, it sounds like our family arguing. You know, um, uh, and that's and that's that's very important. You know, someone uh, ha- ha- not just conveying plot, but 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 also ha- having little uh, asides that that are about life. Like these kinds of things can, of course, uh, ground it. So I think you know you the the there is a scene where um, 
uh, the mother and the father are having a disagreement that could be my parents' disagreement or could be me and my wife's disagreement. And, but it's just spoken uh, with, an, with an older, uh, di- a different dialect, but it's the same conversation. Uh, and I think, um, and, and I, I, I don't, except for when I'm trying to convey certain points of exposition, I, I very rarely uh, translate from, from uh, I don't like write modern dialogue and then translate it. I'm a writer and director. So the way that I write my screenplays is, uh, would be inappropriate if I weren't directing them. Um, uh, as, as an actor who recently turned down a role in one of my movies said uh, that the screenplay was overwrought. Uh, and, and there is a kind of indulgence um, in the, the details of my screenplays that would be entirely foolish if I was writing for another director. There's a level of specificity in the, the blocking. Uh, you know, if Willem Dafoe wears his reading glasses like this, if Robert Pattinson scratches his ear like this, it may very well be in the screenplay. Uh, there's never uh, in my screenplay, Rome burns or they fight. You know, Arthur draws Excalibur, he thrusts towards the giant who parries and, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> so, um, uh, so there. How important do you think historical accuracy is to filming events from the past? Well, it's not important to filmmaking at all, really. And, uh, and you can make a great period story without being accurate. You know, Coppola's Dracula is one of the best designed movies, in my opinion, but it's not accurate at all. But this is something that I like for whatever reason. One of the things that it does is that it cre- is that it cuts out a lot of decision making because everyone knows what the bar is. It's accuracy for the most part. I think that if I was going to be super strict, there was things that I would not have done but you need to have a little bit of variety in the look of things virtually no viking helmets from the period have been discovered like so you can't have everyone with literally the same exact helmet because that's the only one that's been discovered so you have to find a way to make an educated guesses about like different versions based around that they're inspired by the periods nearby that kind of thing um i made a short film called brothers that was a proof of concept to try to get the witch financed um uh, I, it had been many years since I'd made a short film, and my most recent work was a very stylized piece based on Edgar Allan Poe, which featured a puppet as a lead character and uh, performances that were truly weird. Uh, and uh, my producer said, you know, if you want anyone to finance The Witch, you probably ought to make a new short, and it should feature uh, naturalistic performances by children um, and scary woods. Um, and so that was a task. You know, and, and so and, and thus I was able to find a story that uh, met with that pragmatic task. Yeah, I mean, the, the aspect ratio, um, it got a little smaller over the years, but, but I always wanted it to be boxy and I always wanted it to be black and white 35 millimeter. That's something when I, that I saw when I pictured the atmosphere. Um, and of course, like as you move forward, both in the writing and then in development and then in prep, you learn more, things change you know, and your preconceived notions are not always correct. But, uh, but, but you, find, you make choices that are closer to your original intentions, even if they weren't your preconceived notions about how to articulate your intention. Uh, and yeah, so sometimes I, I, ha- I see how it's shot. And, I, and sometimes in certain sequences, I write extremely wide shot, lighthouse tender, like in the middle of the sea, yada, 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 like close shot the hull carves through the waves, like blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I'll do that, which again, as a writer director, I can get away with because it's a terrible thing to do otherwise. Um, uh, and, and sometimes I see that and I don't write it because it's distracting to the flow of the scene. Uh, sometimes I just see a scene, a story, and I know that we're gonna have to find it later. Sometimes I see a scene with, that's a complicated action sequence or stunt or a visual effect or practical effect, and I think, okay, how can I write this in an achievable way? And sometimes I think, if you think about writing it in an achievable way, you're not gonna write it. So just write it and you'll figure it out. 
uh, and you have to be blind to the realities of, of shooting to, to tell the best story.